about yourself, Angie? I'm doing good. You're doing good. Thanks so much for coming out. Thank you for having me. Whew. Welcome to the Fantasy Local Podcast. Local, not local, but famous around these parts. You are on the air with the hostess with the most and sharing the good news that you can use as we talk community awareness and keep you in the know. I am Angela McNeil Woods, aliasly known as That Law Hill Girl. <laughs> and today, y'all, whoo, we have our very first principal on the show. And not just him being a principal, but he is so near and dear to me. Mr. Marvin, I'm sorry, Principal Marvin Smith. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh man, this is this is long overdue, you guys. <laughs> I'm super excited. Super excited. So I'll try to maintain my composure. Okay. <laughs> All right, fam. So now I know you're Carolina's baby originally. That's right. And so where did you move to before? Oh, you know, when you first when I first started teaching? Yeah. Uh so I I of course I'm from Laurel Hill, home uh that's the hometown. Uh Graduated from East Carolina, so I lived in Wilmington for two years. I taught there, and then I moved to the mountains. I moved to Asheville, and I lived in Asheville for 14 years wow. before returning back home back in 18, uh, just before the pandemic. So all all together, I guess uh, I was gone for about 20 years before returning home. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Well, so so where are you now? So I currently live in Lorenberg. Uh, I work, uh, I'm a principal, and my, I'm a, my second year as a principal in Montgomery County Schools, so I, I commute about an hour, uh, one way to work each day, and it's, it's been a great experience. Montgomery County, so what road is that, not 74? It's, it's 0220, but it's 7374 now, going okay. up, just north of Ellaby. Okay, yeah, so. Just north of Richmond County. All right, so you guys, you know, you're a real Carolinian, Carolinian, and everybody get it right. Carolinian, Carolinian. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it would be Highway 74, 501 Bypass, you know, yeah. just throwing some places out there for those who are listening. And uh, so so when you moved away, um, could you tell the difference within the, the school systems? Were they different? Um, so in both, I worked in Pender County first. I worked in Buncombe County, which is Asheville, and then back home in Scotland County for four years before I went to Montgomery, all the schools I've worked in have been Title I schools, and Title I schools are just your low socio socioeconomic status. That means like 40 or more percent of your students are you know, free and reduced lunch. So um, obviously in a city like Asheville, there's more resources because it's just a bigger city. There's you know, more, more um, tax, that, you know, they, they increase the tax to go to the school. So there's more resources there, mm -hmm. but in Montgomery, Pender, and Scotland, um, it, it, there's a lot of the same. I mean, some of your demographics change as far as uh, as far as race, but as far as socioeconomics, they're very similar. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't even know any of that, though. You know. So, so how long have you been in the school system? Ooh, this is my. I'm in my 22nd year now. Are you serious? Yeah, in my 22nd year. Now, for some reason, I want to say, did you start out in sports? I so I, I played football at, in high school and I was a walk on um, at East Carolina for a short time. Mm -hmm. um, but I started out coaching. I was a I was an elementary school teacher my first my first five years in education. Okay. But I coached football and basketball, so that was kind of like sports were my were, were kind of my thing. But I always loved kids and mm -hmm. uh, and I started out elementary. Then I taught middle school for. Um, from 07 to 28 to 2016, so I guess about 11 years. Wow. And then I became an assistant principal for six years, and the last mm -hmm. uh, two years I've been back at the middle school uh, as a principal. And hadn't aged a lick, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I sure feel it when I get up in the morning. <laughs> hadn't aged a lick. Now, and so high school, was that Scotland High School? Scotland High School. All right, Home of the Fight Scouts. Yeah, go there Scots. we go, go Scots. I used to want to be a cheerleader, but it didn't work out for me. So. Now, um, what made you choose this career path? I had some, you know, I, I grew up a, to a, my family is phenomenal. Like, I, I, my family is great, mm -hmm. um, but I grew up to a teenage mom that, you know, she worked, and she worked multiple jobs to, you know, make sure we had stuff on the table. So, I really had a lot of, a lot of critical educators mm -hmm. uh, in my career that really, told me that there was more, you know, there was more out there than what I was maybe experiencing. And that's not to say my home life was bad, but right. there's, there's more. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, Miss Nassif as a kindergarten teacher, I remember James Taft as my middle school principal mm -hmm. would always say, 
um, you know, that smile's gonna take you somewhere. You just keep doing things. And then I got to the high school and, and coaches, you know, Mark Barnes and Tommy Britt and, um, you know, uh, Coach Brooks. There a lot of got Coach Edward for basketball. I had a lot of uh, April Dawkins as a teacher. I can, yeah. I can, I can think of people that told me that I could be more than I ever could, that I ever thought that I could, yeah. and um, and that just uh, it, it's always meant the world to me. And I yeah. felt like going into education, I could do the same for for some some kid, yeah. uh, for some children. Um, I, I got a text from from one of my students today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she, I taught her in. Third grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, and then she helped me with my basketball team some. <laughs> and she's now a 29-year-old professional Seriously? business owner. And yeah. just, like, it wasn't, she didn't need anything. Mm -hmm. She just said, Mr. Smith, I'm just checking in on you. Like, I'm just checking to make sure you're okay. And like, that, that, those things fill the bucket, yeah. man. And it's, I, I can't imagine doing anything else. So you, you make yourself, you know, available. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's Absolutely. Good. That's yeah. good. I love it. I love it. That's the thing about being a teacher. Once, mm -hmm. once they're your kids, they're always your kids. Yeah. Yeah. So. True that. Now, what would be the necessary steps to become a principal? Like, do you have to have great leadership skills or? I, well, <laughs> I, I think the one thing that you have to be is, uh, you have to care about people. Um, programs don't make learners. Um, you know, all the money in the world doesn't make learners. You really have to be in it for the people business. And, and that's the thing I've learned. It doesn't matter how much money you shake at a problem, what program you shake, if you don't have the right people in the right places, then you're not gonna get the right results. Yeah. And, we're, and, and you know, you have to have a passion for doing what's right for kids, even if it's not easy for adults. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the biggest thing, just a, just a conviction for doing what's right for, for, for kids. Yeah, does it play anything into like community or finances? Like, okay, mathematician, do you have to be good at that or no? I think you have, I think you can learn anything and, and you're, I think we learned over COVID, like you can always put stuff in your toolbox. You know, we, we had a lot of things, you know, like podcasts and things of that nature pop up. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I don't necessarily think you have to be a genius. You just have to be willing to work. Yeah. Cause I, I'll tell you, I'm not the, I taught math for nine years at the middle school. I'm not the, I, I don't think, you know, mm -hmm. quantum physics by any stretch of imagination. <laughs> Yeah. But I'm okay with learning, and I'm okay with making mistakes in order to learn, and that's what you have to be willing to do. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Now, what does a typical day as a principal look like from beginning to end, from the time you get to the school? Oh, there is no such thing as a typical day <laughs> as a principal. Uh, my morning, so because I commute an hour, I'm up at like five. I get up, I you know get myself ready, iron, get on the road. And I try to be on the road by six. You know, staff doesn't have to be there till seven thirty. Mm -hmm. Um, kids can come in at, at uh, 7.25 in the car rider line. But uh, it's it's checking to make sure the subs, like if I have subs, like do, or do we have classes covered? So I'm spending my drive kind of preparing my day, like okay. which classes have to be covered, um, who's going to be out, do I need to cover duty stations. Yeah. And then once the kids get in the building, it's all about, um, it's, it's really all about putting out the fires as they come up. Okay. Um, when I was a teacher, mm -hmm. you know, you get to stay in your, your four walls and you, you're just focused on kids and mm -hmm. nothing interrupts your routine unless there's a, um, some type of a fire drill or, you know, transitions or whatever. As an assistant principal, you spend a lot of time with buses and discipline and things of that nature. Okay. Um, but as a principal, you just, you have to address whatever human is yeah. in your presence right now. Like what <laughs> child is having, uh, is having a, a crisis, mm -hmm. what adult needs to talk to you, like, mm -hmm. and and people want to talk to you because they feel like you can impact change in some way, form, or fashion. So, yeah. um, some days I, I get nobody coming to the building. Some days I get 25 people coming to the building and it's back and back and back. And mm -hmm. you really have to make sure that, uh, because you want people to feel like they're involved and that they're heard. So, you want to you know make sure that you have an inviting atmosphere. So, mm -hmm. no two days look alike. Um, it's, it's really about just yeah. supporting people wherever they're needed. Well, you made that, yeah. that was really my question. What, you know, what is your main role of a principal? Um, and then, as an African American, has it been hard? Um, I don't think it's been hard. Um, I think because there's not a lot of us in education, yeah. we get asked questions like we have the magic pill. Sometimes <laughs> I'm just like, you know, and I I can't speak for all black people. Right. Like I can speak yeah. for I can speak for me, and I can speak from you know my kids and you know some of my family, but. Mm -hmm no nationality has all the same answers. Like there's so many different cultures within a culture. So, um, but I, I think as long as you treat people the right way and, yeah. and sometimes it feels, 
in some ways like a, a little bit of pressure to to form like a counter narrative. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, people have this set mindset of what they feel like a black male is. True. Yeah. And I feel like I spend some of my time trying to undo that. Like, no, no, I'm a, right. I'm a, I love my children, I love my family. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm not out doing the things that maybe you think that's what we do, but. Yeah, right. um, so I can't say that it's been hard. It's just, um, sometimes I put some undue pressure on myself to make sure that I make it right. Yeah. And I want to do it the right way. Yeah, wow, I love that. That's good, that's good, wow. Now, I want to pivot for a moment. I want to pivot. So, so many of our youth, you know, that turn into gun violence and, you know, gangs, not all of them. Uh, and unfortunately, the rate of suicide has been so high in the last several years. What do you think is needed to, uh, you know, help our youth move forward? I think um, kids turn to violence or they turn to gangs or they turn to things because they want a sense of belonging mm -hmm. um, specifically your adolescents your, your you know your teenage boys they want a place to belong and you have so many broken homes where there's not the you know a, mm -hmm. a, the, the, a father there in a lot of cases or maybe even a mother there or and I, the thing that I've learned in you know working in title one schools is a lot of times you have neither of the primary parents you have mm -hmm. grandparents and great-grandparents or aunts and uncles okay. Yeah. So those folks are so busy trying to provide a house that a lot of times they can't provide the other supports and, yeah. and, and an ear to listen because they're, you know, they're so busy trying to put food on the table. So I think there has to be some type of outlet. A lot of kids play sports, mm -hmm. and that's great, but not everybody can play sports. So we have to find other ways to have kids plug in to, to interest. Mm -hmm. um, because if, you know, if you, during, you know, you got, you got idle time, they're gonna find something to do. True. And typically it's not gonna be something you want them to. Right, right. Um, so we, you know, money in, instead of, you know, putting money into dog parks and, mm -hmm. um, you know, all the fancy restaurants, like there needs to be mm -hmm. an emphasis on like community centers so kids can have things to do outside of school. And right. uh, for, for kids that don't play sports, there have mm -hmm. to be things at the school that they can, that they can tap into. Um, yeah. One of the things I love about my school is we have a, um, a great CTE program. Um, CTE. CTE Home Ec is what it used to be called. Okay, okay. But, um, you know, we, we have things like culinary and drones and wow. um, medical technology. So kids are learning how to experience these different careers and pathways yeah. to, to find jobs. Um, so it, it, there has to be a return because there's a glut of skills tradesmen, tradesmen in yeah. this country. Like, you know, there's not enough HVAC people or plumbers or electricians, yeah, yeah. which is why they can charge so much money. <laughs> um, but kids have to understand that there's other pathways and other than what they than what they're taking. Um, mm -hmm. You know, quick money isn't always the best money. That's true. I like that. That's good. That's good. They definitely need, need all of that. Now, um, are there any um, mentoring? Program. So your so your program, the CTE, is, is kind of like a mentoring. Mentor it's 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 something they take during the day. We don't okay. in middle school. You don't really do after school as much. That's yeah. more allocated towards the elementary schools. Mm -hmm. We did it. We've done middle. We've done after school, but you don't get very good attendance, so it's not worth the investment a lot of times. Yeah. But there have to be things, and and a lot of times in those communities, you, you don't want it at the school. Like there has to be things where people are, like taking those gotcha. in the community. after school opportunities yeah. out to the community somewhere, to the local churches, which is a safe place, or or something like that. So, unfortunately, and this is just my perspective, mm -hmm. I feel like there's not enough people that are in it for the outcome of kids. Like they're in it, they're in it for the income and. Yeah. For a lot of the kids that we're talking about, they don't have the resources to pay for expensive after-school mm -hmm. programs. Like we need things um, that are nonprofit and people mm -hmm. that are willing to do things without trying to, you know, make their pockets fat. And yeah. that's just not that's that's not today's society, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I, like I haven't found it yet. Yeah. Um, but people aren't looking to, to to help kids without you know breaking the bank. Yeah. And I know when I think about um, the black men in Charlotte, like there are different mentoring services in Charlotte. Um, I'm not sure about the Carolinas, you know. Um, and I want so badly to do, you know, it would be so awesome to have several community centers. But I'm just paranoid about because of the what's going on today with with the robbery and the stealings, mm -hmm. you know. And every time you look up. It's a youth, you know. Right. Not saying that all kids are like that. So mm -hmm. it just makes it hard. I, I, in fact, I would contend that the majority of them aren't like that. But the, the publicity that they get, yeah, like that's that's what you're gonna hear about. You're not gonna hear about the kids at the community center doing robotics or something like that. You're gonna hear about that mm -hmm. crime because that 
say that. Gets gets attention. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Thank you for that, Mark. Absolutely. Yeah, and so um, you have two handsome sons <laughs> of your own. I do. And I'm just so glad knowing that they have you as a role model. And so what has been your advice to them other than, you know, you don't want to be a granddad? <laughs> yeah, my little one, he's, he's talking about, you know, being a granddad. I'm like, you're eight, son. I, I can't hear about that shit. Um, my advice for them is is simply treat people the right way, like being kind to people because you just never know what people are carrying. Yeah. Um, and you never know when you're going to need that person. Whether you need them or not, but you just never know when that person, you know, pe yeah. people remember how you make them feel. You know, yeah. they don't remember what you do for them, but they remember how you make them feel. So yeah, right. just, just treating people the right way. And, and whatever it is in, in terms of uh, career, mm -hmm. like just find something you love to do and you won't feel like you're working. Um, I love kids. I get up every day and it makes it so. I, I, I don't have a I have to mentality. I have a I get to. Like I get to go work with kids. Yeah. I don't have to. I, I, I love it. Um, I love, I love, and, and, and education is one of those things that you don't get the immediate gratification all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear about all the things that are going wrong, yeah. but in five years when, you know, when little Johnny is yeah. graduating <laughs> from high school and going off to college, mm -hmm. that's that, you know, like I said, I talked uh, earlier about bucket fillers. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's that stuff that we, that we, that we live for as teachers, but just, just finding something that you just love to do. And if you get paid for it, it's a bonus. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's exactly right. Wow. Um, now, if anyone had any questions about the session, and you guys, as we are talking, hit that subscribe button because we want to keep doing in great content such as this, you know? Um, how could they reach out to you? Do you have any platforms? Or, um, or do they just need to reach out to me? No. <laughs> I, I'm, on, I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. Okay. I'm on Twitter. Uh, Facebook, obviously. Um, and, and my email, uh, people can reach out to me. So when, I think with, I'm trying to remember, with TikTok and, and Instagram, it's Future Dr. Smith. All right, Future Dr. Smith. Future Dr. Smith. Yeah, and um, it, as a matter of fact, while well, you're in, right there in the middle, <laughs> stay right there. Tell me what's happening now. What, what are you doing up and coming? I am currently, uh, I finished in May, I finished all my, my work uh, towards, my graduate, the coursework towards my dissertation or towards my doctoral degree, and now I'm currently in the process of writing my dissertation. So, wow. uh, chat, you know, next couple chapters over the next few months, and yeah. uh, hopefully to defend in the fall and graduate next December as Dr. Smith. All right, y'all heard it, Dr. <laughs> Smith. That's good. I love it. Man. I'm gonna receive it. I'm, I'm, receive I'm it. just so proud. I, I know your mom and your grandma and your auntie, everybody, big, the whole family. Big supporters. Super, super excited. Oh wow, this is good stuff. So, so I got TikTok, Twitter. And it's Future Doctor? Future Doctor Smith. Okay. Future Doctor Smith. That's good. I like that. All right. So in the event you guys, if you miss anything, I'll have that information for you uh, in regards to uh, Marvin's information. Now, if you had to advise the world right now as we speak, what, what would be your advice? What, what is on you? What's been like heavy, you know, in your spirit, man? I just think... Understanding that our our youth are more than just test scores and statistics, yeah. um, they're people, and they're you, you can't write a. There's a big emphasis on test scores, mm -hmm. and that is a one day snapshot of what they've learned over the course of the year. Yeah. I've seen kids that are brilliant and I know know it all mm -hmm. fail it that day because they had a bad morning. Right. <laughs> and I've seen kids that I know don't know anything because they haven't done anything all year past it because they guessed right that day. So yeah. you have to look at the entire picture of a kid and understand that they, like kids have a lot to say. They just need somebody to listen. And a lot of times uh, I'll, I'll have a kid come to the front office or a young person come to the front office and they'll be like, um, can I, can I speak with Mr. Smith? And if I don't have anything going on, I'm always going to listen because yeah. sometimes they just Really, all they need is somebody to listen to them. That's right. And we learn so much more because the world that we grew up in 20, 30, 40 years ago mm -hmm. is not the same world. There's not the same mm -hmm. pressures and influences mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and instantaneous access to information that they have now. So a lot of times these young people need help navigating that because they're going to have their own interpretation if we don't help them with it. That is so true. That is so true. Oh, my God. I love that. That's profound. And so, you know, with that being said, Marvin, first of all, I'm just tickled that you came, you know, this distance and that you took your time out because I know you can't, you have your studies going on and you got to get back to school, you know, but I want to thank you. Thank you for having for coming me. Coming out, you it was, know. It's a pleasure and a blessing. I appreciate I, it. I hope you come back. Absolutely. So I would love to do another, you know, session on, on our youth, you know, 
and um, I would love for you to come back. Sounds great. I appreciate it. Thank wow. you. All right, you guys, you heard it. So, local, not local, but famous around these parts. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Be blessed.